Wednesday, 25th, March 25th, 2009. Pearls and Jam, Remembrance of Death. Today I was told by Shan, my clinic PA, that Inchip BL, a regular patient of mine, just passed away in his sleep yesterday. He was just turning 54 in robust health despite a major heart attack some four years earlier, at which time I had implanted as an emergency procedure <coughs> two brand new costly drug eluting stents, each in his right coronary artery and his more important left anterior descending artery. Emergency because the left one showed life threatening proximal 100% occlusion that day. He presented to us at ER in the wee hours of the morning in June 2004. Emergencies have the peculiar habit of coming in the wee hours of the morning when the rest of the world were happily on cloud nine. I was rudely shocked because I saw him a week earlier in the best of health. He talking about his impending retirement in September and myself persuading him for the third time to undergo a check angiogram before the retirement. The earlier the better, in view of a positive stress ECG done some five weeks earlier. I'm not a prophet, and the art and practice of medicine is far from being an exact science. Thus, I could not say and quantify with certainty the urgency of the weekly positive stress ECG. At the highest level, the private discussion between doctor and patient, at least at the outpatient clinic scenario, is intuitive and gut feeling. The big jump to exact science lay in the court of the patient upon recommendation of the doctor. When further invasive procedure is thought necessary and recommended, and if especially involving risk and high cost, there is a lot of cajoling and horse trading going on in the clinic. It will be an easier life for us doctors if decision making in medicine is black and white as in law. But in medical practice, there is a whole load of grey areas in the soft science of medicine. The science is easy and universal. The art in this carry profession requires years of wisdom collection. Intuition and most importantly, intellectual honesty are premium values. Most doctors will be able to sleep better if all your patients listen to advice, but there is no way we can force things into our patient's truth on just the basis of qualitative analysis, especially in a situation when the recommended procedure itself carries some morbidity and mortality risk. No doubt very small but finite mortality risk. In such scenario, one can spend hours discussing the potential cost-benefit ratio analysis. But at the end of the day, patients like Encik BL would rather sit on things and procrastinate to their own detriment, oftentimes. By all means, get a second opinion or a third, but never sit and sleep on a serious advice. Some serious medical conditions like heart, brain conditions or cancers are silent conditions that kill, unlike toothache. Says due, qui direct, as the, as the French say. We plan, but God directs. I think BL died of a second heart attack in his sleep. This brought to mind another dear university colleague of mine, several years my senior at first college, Nostimleya. We were there with Datin Sri Rosma in in the early seventies. And I'm positively name dropping here. Uh, this friend of mine saw me some fifty years back for a checkup while on his way to catch up a flight to go back to Sarawak at the Dan Su at the Dan Subang Airport. Positive stress test. No symptom of angina to warrant urgency. Flight in half an hour's time. Important meeting in Sarawak over Petronas, SO production sharing, etc. etc. 
Definitely will see you, Doc, on Tuesday. Cannot miss this meeting. We'll see you after I see Hassan on Monday. See, my friend. I went off scuba diving in Chioman on Sunday and later at dinner read that the head of Sarawak Petronas died over the weekend while attending a dinner. Inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun. I had to live with that sinking feeling in the heart for years whenever I see the widow who used to live in the neighborhood at Section 19 in Subhanjaya. Says you, qui direct. We plan but God directs. Which also reminded me of my dear cousin's demise just exactly a year ago today. That of Dr. Nick Zainal, a fervent, flamboyant character, full of life, a life of public service, the first or second ever Malay cardiologist in the early 70s. Whenever I passed by the junction of the Karak Highway meeting the old KL Bentham Road, my mind thought of Nick Zainal. How could he, a very caring doctor par excellence, very careful person and not the hurried kind of driver, miss the oncoming trailer laden with logs? He was fasting the six-day fast, I presume, and it, was, it, it was, must be 5 p.m. His vision could be clouded by hypoglycemia, that is, low blood sugar. Query, query. I wondered loudly to my sister-in-law one day and was brought back to reality. Come on, Hawk, don't be stupid. This is just cause and effect. Israel had been looking at his diary for hours and days and weeks, waiting for him near that Duran place. You always like to stop for your monthly Musan King. I bet they certainly had no chance, fasting or no fasting. Issue closed. Masha Allah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar. Even Nishat, the big time doctor from that five star hospital, also oftentimes need to be reminded that when one's time comes, there is no delay or hastening of even one millisecond. The cost is just the science of Allah. Just make me wonder, just thinking literally, whether the profound insight that Israel is always carefully studying his diary for any last minute inclusion or exclusion from his boss could make any difference as to how we approach life. Visiting us some 20 30 times in a day, and this is common knowledge to those intelligent people in the Hellwood Hall of Putra Convention Center today, whether that would make them less interested in joking for power and ultimate practice, less money politics. But come to think of it, how many of them care despite so many Abduls and cities from among them? Some even stab their brothers in the back or even figuratively kill to taste power. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. But then again, it's just human to plan Allah ultimately decide. Postscript. Funny what happened at Amno Youth level. Katie's group said KJ won by Raswa. MM's group taught both KT and KJ practice money politics. Young, gangster, young gangsters at work. No honor, integrity, no accountability. It is frightening for all of us that clowns like this would run Malaysia in 10-15 minutes time. Amno has not changed. Corruption is very much the order of the day. A party cannot really depend on 2,500 2, namskars to elect the future PM of Malaysia. Amno is doomed. Too many clowns running the show. Dr. Nishat, 25th March 2009. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allah wa akbar, wa la hawla wa la quata illa billahi na'alim al-azim, wa la hawla wa la quata illa billahi na'alim al-azim, Voilà, hola, hola, quoi t'as la bilan,